I want to tell you the story of a good friend of mine. His name is Max. It's a simple story, but it illustrates the insidious ways in which data ownership and control impact our lives. Max bought a new home just a couple of years ago. It was exactly the home he and his family had been looking for. It was their dream home. They had two months to prepare and plan their move. Moving into your dream home is one of life's triumphant moments. But Max's story is about how the digital side of his transaction made his moment worse instead of better. The promise of the digital economy was supposed to be about making our lives simpler and better. But for Max, the digital economy turned his moving experience into a comedy of the absurd. Max's adventure began with the most basic online task, filling out a change of address form. Simple, right? We have all done that before. So Max went online and registered his new address with the bank that holds his mortgage. Then he did it with the second bank where he holds another account and he realized that he has four credit cards issued by different banks. But even though the credit cards company logo is same on his cards, they have issued through different entities. So Max had to fill out online forms for each of his four credit cards. Then Max had to fill out a form for his car insurance, group insurance, electricity company, natural gas company, landline service, cellular service, and his internet service provider. And then there was his memberships and subscriptions, magazines, grocery deliveries, and his kids, daycare, and local library. Max spent hours online navigating websites, finding the forms, looking up old passwords, authenticating his identity every single time. I met Max for coffee while he was in the middle of all this, and he was clearly frustrated by the whole thing. Max is not a data expert, but I will never forget what he said, because it was a eureka moment. He said it just doesn't make sense. It's the same data set over and over and over again. He said I should be able to have this data in a secure encrypted repository, and then notify all those companies to come and retrieve it and update their database with my permission. The whole thing could be done in minutes. And then he asked me the most important question of all. He said, why do I have to do all the work? Max is 100% right. What he's being asked to do is absurd. The experience could and should be so much better. So how come it isn't? Why does Max have to do all the work? The reason is very simple. Because in many cases that I talked about, Max does not own his personal data. Every time Max filled out a new change of address form, he provided his personal data to another company. And every time he clicked submit, his data became their property. So now Max owns the home of his dreams, but everyone else owns his address. And Max has lost control of that data. Some of those companies will protect his data privacy, but others won't. Some of them will make his data available for sale as part of his customer profile. His new address will travel the world without his knowledge, without his consent, and it will end up in the hands of data brokers and agencies and all kinds of people who shouldn't have it. The data economy isn't working for Max. The truth is Max is working for the data economy, just like the rest of us. Every time we download an app to our phones and agree to the terms of service, the same thing is happening with our addresses, mobility data, browsing histories, purchasing histories, social media posts, viewing habits, all of it. We hand it all over to others, and we relinquish control over what they do with it. And it all comes back to us in the form of advertising and social media feeds and misinformation that we didn't ask for. And all that stuff we didn't want ends up dominating our digital experience. None of this would have happened if we truly owned our data. Digital life and real life would be so much better. Let me give you some examples to show you how. 
The first example is Max's example. If Max owned his data and the companies were using transparent and privacy-preserving data sharing protocols, Max could have asked all those companies not just to update his address simultaneously, but to partner on his behalf, collaborate, and deliver richer, more relevant cross-industry experiences to him. To understand his preferences better, to deliver relevancy, it would free up hours of his time and it would have resulted in a new win-win economic models in which data is an asset and trust is the currency. It's exactly what the digital age always promised us. More free time. Here is a second example. Let's imagine that Max wants to benchmark his entire household budget. If he owned his data, he could share his household budget anonymously with others through a data exchange. Everyone who agreed to share their data would find out if they spent too much on groceries or internet service or even online impulse purchases. And I know that at first sharing household budget data sounds like small potatoes, but it's not. In fact, it's one of the most powerful information on the planet. The data on our personal spending patterns and shopping habits is the foundation of the trillion dollar online advertising industry. The companies operating in the data economy already know every detail about how we spend. They know us better than we know ourselves. And it's one thing they never tell us because they want us to spend more. But what if we owned our data? We could turn the tables. We could use our own data to become more financially responsible and also contribute better to the post-pandemic economy. If we own our data and can access transparent data sharing protocols, we shift the balance of the entire digital economy. All of a sudden, our data starts working for us, not against us. If we own our data, we can share it with people and communities we trust. We can agree with our neighbors to share our community level data on decentralized ledgers to make our local communities and neighborhoods thrive. Parents can share school information and collectively enrich the learning experience of their kids. Neighbors can have the opportunity to invest in their local businesses and coffee shops and help the whole community thrive. Community goals can be created so that access to parks, Facilities and public transportation can be improved, not based on bureaucratic processes, but based on what the community actually wants. If we owned our data and we shared it, communities could learn from each other and achieve more sustainable outcomes and even benefit from more data-driven tax incentives. If we own our data, we can start building trusted intergenerational learning networks. With privacy-preserving data protocols, we can even use our genomics data so that older generation can share their learnings with younger generations on what food and environmental factors affected their health, resulting in healthier generations. With new data sharing protocols, you don't need to move sensitive data. You will just allow someone you trust to ask questions from your data. We can completely transform outdated business models like fee-based wealth banking by connecting high net worth clients and philanthropists to the upcoming generation of entrepreneurial clients and turn the bank into a trust hub for knowledge sharing, value generation, and create a mentor-mentee relationship between the bank's clients. So the question is, how can data, how can we make the world better using data. We need new education programs on the value and physics of data. We need children's books and programs on data science, privacy, and governance of data. We need to retrain our corporate leaders on the governance, transparency, and explainability of data. We don't need data lakes. We need data fabrics. We need to tell them that AI without data is meaningless. So before spending billions of dollars on AI, invest in your data strategy and build participatory systems in your organization. I would like to leave you with something. There are so many frameworks that are designed to help us to make the world a more livable and sustainable place. 
I am going to use the United Nations 17 Sustainable Development Goals. Selecting just one of them, imagine what you can do to contribute to these goals if you could use and share your data in a privacy-preserving way along with the data available from other entities. I'm a data scientist. I have come to truly appreciate the value of data. And if there is one thing I know for sure is that our data is here for good. We have simply got to make it better. And that starts with understanding our data and take back its ownership. Thank you.